Hello friends, welcome to Dento Media YouTube channel. This time I am up with a new video on a very important topic and very commonly asked that is dental plaque. The bacteria found in the saliva can be observed as planktonic. Planktonic means we have floating bacteria in the liquid phase at all times inside our oral cavity means inside our saliva. But the bacteria which is found on the surface of hard structures such as teeth, restorations, prosthesis and implants that forms an adherent gelatinous film which is called as the dental plaque. So dental plaque is an adherent bacterial biofilm which forms on all the hard and soft tissues and it is the principal etiologic agent in caries and periodontal diseases. So as given by the WHO, it is defined as a specific but highly variable structural identity resulting from sequential colonization means sequentially the bacteria they colonize themselves and their further growth on the surfaces of the teeth and restorations consisting of microbes of various strains species embedded in extracellular matrix from where they derive their nutrients and that matrix is composed of bacterial metabolic products and substance from the serum, saliva and blood. So each and every word in this definition has its own meaning and needs to be picked up accordingly. And according to Kirenza, if we discuss, it is defined as the soft deposits that form the biofilm adhering to the tooth surface or other hard surfaces, even including your removable and fixed restorations, these the prosthesis and all. So, uh, coming back to, uh, dating back to long periods of time, that is history. So, if we talk of history of dental plaque, J. Leon Williams in 1897 described dental plaque and Sir G. V. Black in 1899 coined the term gelatinous dental plaque and Warhyung in 1950 described the importance of bacterial plaque in the etiology of dental disease. Now if we talk of some common terminologies uh, which comes along with plaque that is materia alba. So materia alba refers to the soft accumulations of bacteria, food matter and tissue cells and they lack the organized structure of as of that of the plaque and they are easily displaced off with the water spray. And if we talk of the calculus, calculus is a hard deposit that forms by the mineralization of the plaque and it is generally covered by a layer of unmineralized plaque and that forms the calculus. And if we talk of a biofilm, biofilm it is microbially derived sessile community characterized by cells that are irreversibly attached to the substratum or interface or to each other and they are embedded in a matrix of extracellular polymeric substances that have produced and exhibited an altered phenotype with respect to growth rate and gene transcription. And if we talk of the acquired pellicle, it is the homogeneous membranous acellular film which covers the tooth surfaces and frequently forms on the interface between the tooth, the dental plaque and the calculus. So if it, uh, how do you detect plaque? So when you see a patient under direct vision, it's quite whitish yellow and it is difficult sometimes because there is a color similarity between the tooth and the plaque. So you can't hardly distinguish between the two and it can be readily seen on teeth after one to two days of uninterrupted plaque formation when the patient doesn't follow his oral hygienic measure measures. Thin plaque is translucent, hardly visible. Stained plaque may be acquired. The plaque gets stained and then it gets visible. That is stained plaque is in 
टी कॉफी कैफीन स्टेन और टबाको स्टेन एंड थिक प्लाक इज द टीथ अपियर वेरी डल एंड अपियर वेरी डर्टी नाउ वी कैन डिटेक्ट प्लाक विद इंस्ट्रूमेंटेशन एज वेल सो वी नीड टू यूज एन एक्सप्लोर और अ पेरियोडोंटल प्रोब फॉर दैट so how do you do that is by running the explorer or the probe tip along the gingival third of the tooth you run it and you take out the plaque so when it is present it will adhere to the tip of the explorer and you can make it out it is slippery due to the coating of a soft slimy layer and when calcification has started that is calculus it appears slightly rough another way of detecting plaque is we can use disclosing agents like we have caries detecting dyes we have disclosing agents for plaque so dental plaque has the ability to retain a large number of dyes because the polarity difference is there because in the components of the plaque and the dyes so it takes up dyes very easily so disclosing agents or dyes they work by changing the color of the dental plaque so that it comes in contrast with the tooth surface and we can make it out yet yes this is plaque the first chemical reported to the stain plaque was iodine but nowadays many dyes have been used as disclosing agents the first one was iodine now the classification of plaque we have supra gingival and we have sub gingival so supra gingival will be in the coronal or the marginal areas and sub gingival will be tooth attached uh, attached to the unattached gingiva that is your marginal gingiva and the epithelium attached plaque now the main differences between the two is if we talk of the matrix in the supra gingival there is 50% of matrix which is there but in sub gingival there is almost no matrix or little the flora in the supra gingival is mostly gram positive and in sub gingival it is mostly gram negative the motility of the bacteria the motile bacteria uh, they are few uh, present in supra gingival but they are commonly found in the sub gingival one and if we talk of anaerobic or aerobic environment so as it is understood the supra gingival is more of an aerobic environment so we'll find aerobic species unless it gets thickened up and you have anaerobic uh, bacteria or flora beneath you know and the sub gingival one is highly aerobic areas are present and as well as anaerobic areas are also present in the sub gingival plaque and if we talk of metabolism the supra gingival plaque uh, depends predominantly on the carbohydrates and sub gingival it is predominantly proteins the nutrition which is derived if we talk of the timeline how does it develop the bacterial species at birth it is sterile it is very much sterile and in uh, when it comes to hours then facultative aerobic then second day anaerobic then up to 2 weeks you have mature microbiota and uh, when the child is greater than 2 years you have weaning then you have 400 different types of bacteria colonizing in the mouth now the niche of plaque accumulation intraoral supra gingival hard surfaces whether it is a tooth an implant restoration or prosthesis and in the sub gingival regions you have periodontal pocket the root cementum and in if we talk of the softer areas that is the pocket epithelium the buccal palatal and floor of the mouth epithelium the dorsum of the tongue the tonsils these are all the uh, nicks of plaque accumulation where it can get accumulated be it the hard surfaces be it the soft surfaces the composition of plaque is very important mainly consisting of microorganisms and intracellular matrix so the microorganisms is 1 gram of wet plaque contains 2 into 10 raised to the power 11 bacteria and if we talk of the intercellular matrix is 20 to 30% of the biofilm mass and principally it is polysaccharides of microbial origin its glucans fructans so water is 80% and solids is 20% the dry weight of plaque is composed of bacterial and salivary proteins making 50% and the carbohydrates and lipids making 25% the glycoproteins mucopolysaccharides 
leukocytes, macrophages, small number of epithelial cells, inorganic ions, mainly 10%, calcium, phosphorus and fluorides. Now if we talk of the bacterial composition from different sites, so different sites the bacteria is not going to be the same. The bacteria uh, is going to be different because the environment around the bacteria is different. So wherever the bacteria gets a favorable environment, they start colonizing there. So if we talk in the approximal surfaces, it is mainly the gram positive and negative. The facultative and obligate anaerobes they are found, mainly Streptococcus, Neisseria, Prevotella, Actinomyces and Bellonella. And if we talk in the fissures, it is gram positive, facultative anaerobes, Streptococcus and Actinomyces. And if we talk in the gingival crevice, it's gram positive and negative, obligate anaerobes, Streptococcus, Actinomyces, Prevotella, Treponema and Eubacterium. Now the next is the phases of the black formation that is the biofilm. So first if we see this attachment of the bacteria, they are going to attach themselves to the substratum from where they are going to derive their nourishment. The second phase is going to be the growth. The colonization, the attachment is going to enhance their growth. They are going to multiply in numbers and the third is detachment. Half of them will get detached and form new biofilm somewhere else. So via quorum sensing and all this bacterial interactions, the biofilm is formed and they colonize in different sites of the oral cavity. So the formation of the acquired enamel or the pellicle is the first stage which forms immediately by the selective adsorption. There is adsorption of the salivary microbial molecules to the tooth surface. Then transportation is going to be passive to the coated tooth surface by the flow of the fluids. And then reversible bacterial adhesion. It results from the long-range physico-chemical interactions between the bacterial surface and the pellicle coated tooth. Then irreversible bacterial adhesion is stronger specific stereochemical interactions are going to take place and uh, via the adhesins and cognate receptors on the pellicle. Then they are going to colonize co-adhesion or co-aggregation. It involves adhesion receptor interaction between approaching bacteria and already attached early colonizers. The cohesion process results in characteristic morphological structure such as corn cob appearance and test tube brushes which is very very important and then the attached microorganisms are going to multiply. The bulk of the biofilm is going to result from cell division of the attached cells. The synthesis of the extracellular polysaccharides also take place resulting in the formation of the matrix. And then detachment, the finally detachment is going to take place that is going to produce enzymes. They are going to break off the adhesions and enabling the cells to detach and colonize somewhere else. So this is a one day old plaque. The micro colonies, they extend perpendicular away from the tooth surface. Then developed supragingival, they show overall filamentous nature and micro colonies extending perpendicularly. Then histological section showing non-bacterial components like WBCs and epithelial cells interspersed. These is the particular or the peculiar corn cob appearance and the test tube brush appearance which we get. So dental plaque is a biofilm is that uh, Costerton et al stated that biofilm consists of single cells and micro colonies. They are all embedded in highly hydrated anionic exopolymer matrix. And the historical perspective will be in 17th century where Anton von Leeuwenhoek saw microbial aggregates as scrapings. Bill Costenton coined the term biofilm and Donlin and Constanton more salient description of the biofilm was given. The ultrastructure of the biofilm and the composition of biofilm and the modes by which attachment of bacteria takes place will be discussed in my next video. For now, this much is uh, for the part one of the dental plaque. Hope you liked it. 
and do drop any questions in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel Dento Media. Thank you.